Good afternoon. Good morning, everybody in the Zoom. I'm Dr. Shirley Young, and uh, welcome everybody to join us today for a one-hour session. So um, on site here, actually, uh, we have JCI President Ocean of uh, Rest Choi. You want to say hi to everybody? So uh, Rest Choi is the president of JCI Ocean and also is a supporting organization to provide the, um, the Zoom link for us. Yeah. Thank you. And um, today we also welcome Joshua. Joshua, you want to come over here? Uh, is our co-organizer for the logistic and also a very well-designed poster. So Joshua from BMI uh, Intelligence. Hello. And we have a souvenir, which is about 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which is uh, for our supporting organization. So that's for you. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. And uh, on site, we also have the third guest. is the president for Rotary Club, Hong Kong Island East. Is uh, Bernard Lee, and uh, he's a technical guy from the technology area because one of our themes is about art and how to resilient. So welcome, Bernard, to join us. Hello, everybody. Okay, so um, the rundown of today will be the first 15 minutes. Uh, I will uh, talk about my new book just launched, which is about um, resilience and also um, futures of education. So thank you for um, Cesar, it's a Spanish, uh, actually working in the Discus um, APEC, it's a technical head, and uh, they're working on the resilience in the art and also movie and metaverse. So um, he will join us in the Zoom, right? And uh, we have two moderators of today. One is uh, Peter. Peter uh, Momadi is the uh, founder of Global Youth Forum and working with me on the volunteer award for the UN uh, volunteer uh, working in Zoom and also across countries. And the second moderator is uh, Musa. Musa, you want to say hi to everybody? So Musa actually is the United Nations UN OSSC Entrepreneurship Academy bronze winner. And uh, she is living in Kenya right now and also she is a nurse. So, Musa, you want to say hi to everybody here in the Zoom? Okay, and Peter. Okay, so Peter will join us soon, all right? All right, so uh, we're going to um, talk about my book, and uh, I hope everybody from different country of today, we have Kenya, we have uh, Spain, we have uh, Nairobi, and also different country, at least maybe around six country. And uh, later on, we have a uh, um, Russian artist, Anna Zalanko, also will share her opinion on the resilience on art and also how to establish new business under COVID-19. Okay, so may I invite Joshua to um, start with the PowerPoint for the first 15 minutes of my presentation on the new book. Thank you, Joshua. All right. So um, for my new book, the title is called Futures of Education. We focus on how to establish a community just like today. And also in the past about five years, I have my community with the UNOSSC, UN Prime, and also UNESCO together with a lot of academia, uh, professor and student. And then in my book, we have all together eight chapters and I will highlight about uh, three models because the three models will be related on today's resilient art. Okay, next page, please. Okay, so this is about my background. So um, this year, actually, uh, beside UNESCO, UN Prime, and also the, um, the UN OSSC, I also working for um, Internet Deaf. It's a United Nations Global Compact member and we are working on the Miss Environmental Contest. And this year will be the second time, and also supported by Gracia Christian College. And the deadline will be end of January. So you are welcome to join, because we are not just only talk about uh, environment, but also link up with new business, with the nature appreciation. And then uh, one more good news, I just uh, nominated for the, um, the women who lead 
the national award from India, and the award is recognized by the government of India. So um, the result will be coming up within these few days, and I'm one of the shortlisted awardees uh, from Asia. Okay, next. So when we talk about we see of art, so art actually can be a content, but with the content we can generate business. However, we need to think from the artist's uh, viewpoint and also add some new element on technology. Because they're living in the two ecosystem, the artists have their own way of thinking. And then technology people, they have their own way of deliver or maybe use the tools. So when we try to bridge the gap, art, the content, with technology, the tools, we need to have a curriculum. We need to have a dialogue to bridge the gap. And this is what UNESCO focused on resilience of art. In the past um, October up till maybe the coming March, we talked about debate over about 200 times. So hope we can have some insight after today's event. So next, please. Now this is the book, and then you can uh, find in the um, Amazon.com. So next, please. So the first uh, model I want to highlight, all right, so three models. The first one will be under COVID-19. A lot of people maybe uh, suffer from a lot of pressure in Zoom, uh, in the working relationship because they're under maybe uh, isolation, quarantine, and also new normal of working behavior. So what will be the new normal to enhance productivity is very important. So you can see these are the elements. Say, for example, we need to have the contact point because the service provider link up with the consumer where they're going to connect. So this is the problem. A lot of human resources and also management uh, unit, they need to think about how to contact with the consumer, with the service provider. It's a real-time workforce management, real-time. So that's why it's related to technology. And also, they mentioned about the community, how to sustain. All right. So these are the cause and also the result. So next model. So the second model we're going to talk about will be about the content. So in the content, we talk about uh, a lot of things that I have produced before, like the painting. Uh, say, for example, I used my um, painting for producing tote bag. And also these, all my painting and Chinese calligraphy will be using for the book cover. And uh, I'm producing a lot of uh, bottle. Later on will be the mug together with my artistic element. So that's why the content actually can be art related. But the thing is how to use the content related to sustainability, business model. So that's why you can see the factor will be about emotion readiness. Under COVID-19, a lot of people maybe suffer stress. Uh, symptom of self-management is very important. So that's why we need to know about new normal of productivity. New normal of happiness is very important. And happiness and productivity will be linked up to art and also linked up to technology. Now we come to the third model. Now the third model will be talking about if we are going to use the content so that will be linked up to IP, linked up will, uh, to the, the artistic light, um, the property rights, how to uh, use the kind of maybe uh, legal regulations to safeguard the interest of the artist because they create a lot of new things. But the distribution channel, we need to rely on technology, right? So that's why these are the three major models we need to talk about after my book launch of today and then link up with some discussion with Russian artists uh, with Spanish, um, the technology from uh, discussed APEC. Now, we come to the next page. So after my uh, presentation on the three model, we have discussion. Each discussion take about 15 minutes. The first discussion will be moderated by Peter in the Nairobi. And then the second will be for the moderator, Musa from Kenya. So what we are going to talk about will be art, is the element of content or art is the way for therapy. Under COVID-19, I designed a lot of things. 
also is the way to help us to stabilize about our emotion and also uh, regain our productivity. And then the second thing, the model we just talked about is the content. How to make use of the content? Because the content will be identity of the artist or maybe the art community. However, just only with art is not enough. We need to have technology which is related to virtual skill set. So these are the three major areas that will be facilitated by Peter, by Musa, and also me. And the rest of the participants, you're welcome to express about your opinion. So each session will be take about 15 minutes. And then the, when I finish with this, we're going to take a group, a group photo and also at the end. So next, please. Okay, discussion number one. When we talk about futures of education, okay, we have a forum organized about uh, three weeks ago by UNESCO Hong Kong and Global Center. We'll be talking about a, a lot of disruption and transformation in resilience. So we have an argument. Are we going to have more technology to bring into the program or maybe into the new business? Or we need to have caring and humanistic way of thinking, just like John uh, mentioned uh, earlier about um, psychology need to be uh, integrated into our daily life. And the second thing will be to balance between academic theory and vocational skill set. And also, Professor um, Pavlova from uh, Univo also join us today. And the second uh, discussion will be facilitated by Musa. We'll be talking about what kind of policy that we expected from the government or from different uh, parts of the world, like good practices, to support art community, technology community, and also from the educator community. We have three ecosystems, artists, technology, and also education. And the last part will be facilitated by me, will be on the incentive. Not just any money, but maybe reputation or maybe a kind of uh, sense of achievement. We need to support the community, right? So let's take a group photo. So Joshua, you can turn on the video. And on site here, we have three um, experts. And then I just introduced Red is from JCI Ocean. And also, we have Bernard, is a UN OSSC judge in the past few years, and also is the president for um, the Rotary Club Hong Kong Island East. And then on site, we have another guest here, is Joshua, is a lecturer from Gracia Christian College. And us, actually, he has organized a lot of um, academy on the finance competition, financial planner. And very lucky, we also have Caesar. Welcome, Caesar, to join us. So Caesar actually helped us to write the book forward. So Caesar, working for this guest, APAC is the technical head. Okay. Hi, hello, Caesar. everyone. Hello. And next to Caesar is the Shirley Law. Shirley Law is the uh, professor from uh, Xi'an University. Xi'an University. Welcome, Shirley, to join us. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> and then uh, we have Professor Pavlova Margarita. So Professor Pavlova is coming from Univo. When we talk about academic skill set together with vocational, and uh, Professor Pavlova is very important. So welcome to join us. Yeah. And then uh, Anna. Anna is the lecturer. Anna, if, if possible, you can turn on the video. So Anna is a very uh, well educated artist, okay, from Russia. And actually, right now, he's stationed in Hong Kong. And then uh, she's going to share about her opinion about how to balance between humanistic thinking together with uh, technology when he's using a knife, using a knife for drawing, okay? And then uh, let me see who else here in a group photo. And uh, Peter, Peter is the, our first moderator from UN Volunteer, um, the Global Youth Forum. So hello, Peter. Thank you for uh, joining our community as a uh, moderator. OK, so I think everybody can turn on the video. And also, Nava, we take a group photo. And then I will pass the time to the first 
moderator, Peter. So Peter, you will invite Anna to share about her opinion, and also Caesar, and also Professor Pavlova sharing about resilience of art, all right? All right, so welcome everybody. Okay, so um, you can join over here. Yeah. Joshua? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, rest. Okay. So quality of education. Yeah. So one, two, three. Hello, Sina. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So thank you. So now, 15 minutes. I will pass the time to our first moderator from Nairobi. In the, it's the founder of UN Global Youth Forum. Now, Peter your floor, and then please invite the guests to discuss about the first question. Thank you, and I will help to drop down some notes. All right, All right. so welcome, welcome everyone, everyone to this to this wonderful this session, and then, thanks, thanks so much, so much Dr. Shirley, for inviting me to be the first moderator. So as you have just highlighted, we got some key areas, the new normal, and I know when we mentioned the new normal, few things pop in our heads because of COVID-19 and so many things. And you can, as you can see in the room, we have various people from various countries. So I will invite our first um, guest, that is Anna Selanga, to just give her opinion on new normal of productivity and how she views this end of like uh, looking at things in terms of humanistic based future of education and technologically based future education. So, Anna, jump on. Thank you, hello everyone. So for my opinion, art is not just like you stay in the studio and you draw a painting. It's more than that. You should expand your boundaries, go outside restaurants, cafe shops and galleries. You should do instead of traditional art more of digital and like you shoot yourself while you're doing art you just make it more three-dimensional like all the ways of the life of artists nowadays people would love to see so yeah just make it more like show more of your life if you are an artist i would say and and you got some 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 more uh, some deep in, insights there of like just show some more so jumping on and just like echoing what you've said, I'd love to invite Professor Margarita uh, to also share with us what her opinion in terms of the future of education looks like, uh, comparing that with the humanistic based and technologically based approaches. So Margarita, jump on. Trying to unmute, unmute myself here, okay. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so I think it's a very interesting topic. Um, um, actually, many years ago, I was exploring that issue. In 2009, I wrote a book that was sort of looking at the values that relates to sustainable development and that we need to address in technology education, design and technology education. And um, of course, when we are looking at it from the philosophical perspective, there are two opposite views. So one is anthropocentric that is focusing on the well-being of humanity and that can see the nature only as a resource that we will use to meet our needs. And the other um, uh, spectrum of these um, philosophical thoughts are ecocentric, yes, when we are putting nature in front of everything and we believe that we shouldn't um, look at our needs, but we need to preserve the nature. And this is our main sort of, um, I don't know, objective in our life. And of course, this is a more balanced approach in the middle that is usually called weak anthropocentrism. Yes, so when we are uh, thinking about um, how we can meet our needs and not damage the nature at the same time. And so when we're talking about sustainable development goals and how we should um, organize our education, I think that we should have this balanced position. And um, actually here we did a lot of studies and um, projects in Asia Pacific region, 
when we are trying to look at the ways we need to introduce ideas that are relevant to education for sustainable development goals. And um, we observed a lot of classrooms actually in Hong Kong recently, and we realized that, um, of course, it should be a particular pedagogy. We need to take kids outside the classroom, as the previous speaker mentioned. But when we're in the classroom, we also need to use the pedagogy that engage students and um, that um, uh, contextualize what they're learning within the project or within um, the problems. So we need to orient our teaching towards the problems, take students to the community, take them outside the classroom, but also inside the class, they should work in groups and they should look at the teacher as a facilitator, but not as the only source of knowledge. So I, I think that it is very good that different type of people are looking at the way we can um, implement these goals through working with the um, students or so people at different age. Thank All you. Right. Okay. All right, uh, Margarita, you've got some solid points there touching on environment and making it sustainable and just ensuring that we, we take students outside the classroom. And connecting that one with Anna's point where she mentioned that we go to see ourselves in the art. And I think then this brings me to another angle where I would love to bring um, Caesar. Caesar, I'm sure you are in the room and I'd love to bring you just on this conversation to also just share with us, uh, looking at the new normal. What, how does the future of education look like? Uh, should it be humanistic based or technologically based? So jump on Caesar and share with us your opinion. Oh, well, uh, hello everybody first. And, uh, well, I am a technical guy. I am an engineer and I work towards uh, getting technology. And I, I am a true believer that technology is just a tool to, to let people to work in a more humanistic way. So um, there is many there is many people that talks about how uh, artificial intelligence and all the new technologies is making us lazy or how they can actually uh, over, uh, overtake jobs from humans, etc. But I think that this is all part of the evolution, and we are just going to and, and how it is evolving still. We are going to keep uh, using technology to just to help us uh, grow and focus more in what being human is, just to be able to develop these that uh, machines cannot do. So I do believe that the future is going to be very, very much involved in technology, but that is going to allow us to discover more of who we are. All right. So Caesar, Caesar is uh, bringing just like a, a point where we are going to use technology, but that technology is going to help us discover who we are. And that is really a solid point. So I know Rex is also in the room and Rex, I might, I'm just tempted to jump over to you. I see you, we are the, you and Lai, you have your masks on, so I love that one. So just to jump on to you and just ask you uh, in terms of the future of education, what should we focus on? The theory side of it or vocational skills? So I'll just love to, to hear your opinion on this one. Jump on uh, Rex. Okay, I think uh, so as as we wait for Rex to study uh, his technology that just like Caesar have said, uh, we just you feel free to use the chat. Rex, you may you may want to unmute uh, unmute yourself. Hello, 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 hello. All right. Um, Rex, are we okay? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Rex, Rex, I, sorry, Rex, I think people are struggling. They can't, our guests can't hear you. I can see Margarita, she can't totally hear you. So. Okay. 
So, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you. So that um, I think for the future of the education is a great opportunity for the humankind. Because for the next generation, uh, under this new normal, it's easier for the uh, children to uh, learn things through Zoom and different platforms online that they can reach out to the world to learn things from different countries. So I think it uh, brings the earth uh, to be a flatter earth that we can connect uh, by point to point. Like now, so I would encourage uh, for the future generation to, um, how to say that, um, to uh, attend more online uh, forum or uh, online discussion like this so they can learn from different countries to bring humankind to a better future. Okay. okay. So then, so then uh, uh, thanks, thanks so much, so Rex. Much, so let me jump to Professor Margarita. If you look at the current system of education, looking at the academic theory and vocational, uh, <laughs> vocational skills, what would you like recommend uh, in terms of the future of education? What would you like, how, how would you think that would look uh, like? I just want to comment on the previous um, speaker who was uh, talking about this technological uh, skills or values. I think this discussion has been on the plate for a long time. And particularly when we're talking about sustainable development, can we fix sustainable development um, problems by new technologies or do we need to change values? And um, of course the argument is that really we need to focus on the values and it was a number of studies at the global level when they asked the leading expert uh, about the future of education and how curriculum should look like. And there were two studies of that kind that I know at least. And um, these um, high ranking thinkers from different areas, not necessarily from education, they said that of course curriculum should actually be developed around the values or themes or topics. And some of these topics are covered um, by sustainable development goals. Because when we're talking about technology, you would agree, uh, um, you are too young to, to know about that, but maybe you know that, um, for, for example, during the Second World War, um, Nazis, they're using the um, gas chambers in concentration camps, yes? So it was a perfect piece of technology, but it was used against all humanity or all possible values that relates to humanity. So of course, technology can help us a lot, but I think that the basis is really developing the particular set of values that then people will use for the benefit of humanity, but not against the humanity. And I totally agree with all these studies that have been um, conducted at the international level that stated that, yes, we need to rethink uh, our curriculum, how we should structure it. And maybe it shouldn't be structured based on the subject, but it should be structured based on the themes or topic that we believe that are important, that help students to develop this particular attitude towards the world. And then develop this technical knowledge to support um, them. Oh, all right. Thanks so much, Professor. And I think you got some solid point coming over in terms of the values. How can we inculcate these solid values that will make people uh, work, bring like technologies that will serve the humanity? I'd love to bring Anna on this conversation. Anna, if you are just asked to like say with the new normal and people still want to be productive, how should the future of education look like incorporating the educational side of a uh, uh, humanist based on it um, and the technology based uh, technology side of it how will that look like for you Anna mm, for technology I would say you should apply it more to the world like in the classroom do more visual effects with arts especially it works with arts make it more dimensional like arts music and speaking like all parts of it together yeah. and yeah the main is just put it more and more into our life into the kids life yeah all right so uh maybe i'm going to put it on my own way that uh inculcating or putting that technology into the kids life so that they grow with it and adding with the values and bringing the caesar's point of uh 
Caesar's point of view. I think that now brings me again to bring Rex to this other conversation. Rex, you mentioned something on, on getting people to Zoom and the online studies. How can this help shape the future of education as we move forward into 2022 and beyond? What are your thoughts? Um, I think for people, um, like that for the new technologies that uh, we have the digit, uh, the next generation will be, will be go up with the uh, Zoom technologies or like live conference technologies. So they will adapt the new uh, learning path that um, that presented for them, so that um, <coughs> they will utilize like different uh, information from different platforms like from YouTube, like from different online classes, that they can learn from different platforms that they uh, usually we So the uh, curriculum of the education will not just stay in the schools. It will move over the, uh, to the online platform. So they can grab the information from the internet so they can learn from themselves. So for the educators, I think they can um, see this as the, <coughs> like the opportunities to uh, you, uh, upload their uh, content to the internet that they can share to the world. So for the upcoming education, I think they, uh, the next generation will have a collective uh, information from the world that to develop new things. So information in, um, is not localized. Information will be like globalized. So they will use the information from global to do the local things. <laughs> Okay. okay. I, 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 one point. Go for it, Margarita. Yeah, of course, technology is super important. There is no doubt about that. And now this Facebook developing this meta universe. And so we'll have a different type of technologies that will be jumping in our lives. But I think that we should remember that technology is a means for achieving a bigger goals. Yes, because I mean, just to put our classrooms on Zoom, this is not the main objective, yes? We should yeah. have a bigger objective in mind when we are using technology or developing technology. So this is just my small point. No, I will say it's not a small point. It's like a solid point, uh, Professor. But now let's, let's, I know we are running short of time, but now on this one, I'll just go around my three, uh, my three guests to just give us, like if you are asked in five seconds to just speak about new normal of productivity and relating that to the future of, of education. Can you like, maybe like advise your government in five seconds, what they need, probably need to look at in terms of restructuring or making education meet the future needs? What will that be? Five seconds, each of you, I'm starting with Caesar. Oh, that's a very, very difficult question. I think, uh, under my point of view, education needs to, uh, well, uh, we, we are coming from a pandemic, right? Education needs to consider any possibility and to be open and flexible uh, to be able to, to, to arrive to everybody that needs it. Because I don't think it's correct to have people uh, in their 10s, 15s that are not going to school and that cannot develop their education correctly because the government is not prepared. Muted, sorry. Sorry for that. So, Caesar, I got flexibility from you. That's a solid one. I like it. Let me jump to now to Anna. Anna, Anna, you with us? I think education needs to be more international and to combine more countries together. That's the future. Solid one. International mode of education. That's a solid one. Um, let me jump to Professor again, Margarita. International is very important, but now we are observing a lot of nationalistic type of agenda that is growing in uh, different countries. So I think that the international perspective is really important. Yes, inter internationalization is really important. But when we look at the studies that have been conducted by big consulting firms or something like World Forum, 
Yes, and yeah. um, they're also putting um, the same question on their agenda. What is uh, important for education? How future education should look like? And they're more and more focusing on the soft skills. Yes, that we need to develop soft skills because the nature of the labor market is changing so quickly. So, for example, if you develop very specific technical skills, then the person might be out of job very soon because that occupation will not exist anymore. And yeah. so, and, and of course, this type of technical skills will be the foundation to develop the next type of technical skills. But yeah. to be able to transform, we need to have these soft skills, yes, like communication, self-learning or lifelong learning, as we are calling it, yes. And then also, uh, more and more often we have self-management, yes, because um, and when we had projects in some developing countries in Asia, for example, in India, and there are a lot of um, NGOs that are trying to work with people so they can enter the labor market, they said that um, self-management is completely missing. So they just don't know that they need to be on time to work, very simple things. But also at the high level, it is also the same. Yes, we need to manage our time, we need to manage our tasks. So from my perspective, I think it is really important to focus on these soft skills in addition to all these traditional um, technical skills or hard skills. Thanks so much, Prof. So let me jump to Rex for the final one. And then uh, we have our four sum, summed up and then I will come the next moderator. So Rex, jump on to, jump on to your last one. Okay, hi. Um, I think uh, as Professor said that I think the uh, technology is the medium of the exp uh, human expression that um, from Humankind, that I think um, the how we express through different medium, and what kind of like uh, the like uh, so like uh, how we communicate through the art and how we can express through art is the uh, core thing that we can do. That um, like in uh, like different art, like we can draw the painting. Like now we can upload different content in different medium. So I think the soft skill as Professor said is important. So that um, like how we can express our, like the true human nature through, this, uh, through the medium so that we can like uh, connect with each other. I think that's the main point for upcoming like changes. So the medium will change us, but what, how we express ourselves will not change because we are human so that how how we express ourselves is the key point. So thank you. All right. So to my four to my four guests, I must say thank you so much. And these were the four points you recommended for your uh, the in the the future of education: flexibility, internationality, the soft skills, technology, and value. So thank you so much, and I appreciate your indulgence. And it was really nice engaging you. So thank you so much. by Peter in Nairobi. It's a very good and insightful one. So for the second session uh, to be facilitated by uh, Musa, and Musa is going to invite uh, Sina, okay, from uh, APEC, the marketing head of Discuss, and also um, invite Dr. Shirley Law from uh, Shi Yan University, and also Bernard Lee, okay, from Rotary Club, and also it's a real logical founder on the expert. So we have more diversity. And uh, Musa, now will be your turn for the 15 minute session on the policy and also incentive to support the three communities, artists, technology, and education. Thank you, Musa. Okay.
Okay, we give Musa one more minute to see uh, whether any uh, Wi-Fi problem, and then uh, I can replace from Musa. Musa. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now will be your floor. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm going to moderate on policy to support art-related activities for resilience. For resilience. So, as you understand that each and every country have their own policies and regulations so as to guard their country, we are going to discuss on it today. Uh, the first question is, I want to ask, what are some of the policies we support? What are some of the policies in the country which support art related activities for resilience? And I'm going to invite Dr. Shelley Law of Shuyan University to discuss to us some of the policies in her country. Hey everybody, I hope that uh, all of you can hear what I'm saying, but um, sorry about that, M maybe, maybe um, the voice is not too clear, can, can I know about the, the question again, or uh, the topic that we would like to share? The topic that we're going to discuss is policies uh -huh. to the policies to Art-related activities for resilience. The policy. Um, uh, hello? Uh, hello, I'm here. I'm here, I'm but here. Um, oh, are you? I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Shirley, Dr. Lo, yep, who's this I'm question here. will be about what kind of policy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm will be a good practice to support to bridge the gap among the three ecosystems on art, technology, and also education. You mm -hmm. can suggest what policy will be good or maybe some good practices that you can learn from other countries that can help uh, bridging the gap or maybe narrow down the gap between vocational skills and uh, maybe academic theories. Okay, thank you very much uh, for Mosha and also Shelley. And also, uh, basically, um, there is quite a lot of different policy, but uh, so far, what about that? Uh, can I share about business ethics? Business ethics, particularly um, sometimes um, economic is important, education is important, but sometimes I think uh, it is much more important is to let our, um, our student to know about um, the importance of ethical concern, especially when they learn about the new technology or when they um, learn for the uh, policies or when they uh, work out uh, um, uh, with different technology like uh, the, uh, the privacy and also um, uh, how to protect uh, the property of the others. So I think uh, this policy may be useful, especially uh, when they concern about business ethics, basically it can also think about uh, uh, profit maximization in terms of the business. They can also help different stakeholders to get their maximized profits uh, uh, benefit, but at the same time, it can also help us like um, uh, sustainability, environmental sustainability. We can have more uh, exploration in this area. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, yes. Hi, thank you, Munza. Having some connection problem. <laughs> Musa, you can start to ask uh, the rest of the floor, say for example, uh, Mr. Bernard Lee from Rotary Club and also Sina from Discus APEM Marketing and also Johnny from BMI Intelligent also join us. So welcome everybody. 
you can show up your hand and voice your opinion about policy. Any volunteer? Or uh, Sina? Sorry, what was the question again? We are discussing the same area about policy and also incentive. So uh, maybe Bernard, you can share about some technology, uh, new policies, or maybe some kind of funding uh, proposal, anything. Yeah. I'd like to give a little bit of different perspective because I was uh, sharing to kids this afternoon about the uh, universe. So as we live in our universe and, and in the movie world, you know, we have the multiverse as in the latest uh, Spider-Man movie. So uh, a lot of things are happening in parallel. Uh, the reason why a lot of uh, kids, young people, they are absorbed into stories uh, uh, like, you know, magic stories, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, like it's because, you know, in, in, in the virtual world, uh, we can call it metaverse, we can call it, you know, like uh, multiverse, we can call it like like fairy tales. They are different rules, right? So, uh, and uh, earlier, Shelley had uh, brought us to um, one of the Zoom meetings about uh, uh, virtual United Nations, whereas, you know, the kids come together and they play the role of world leaders and then they negotiate with each other. So I think that is excellent stimulation and that's excellent way for young people to participate mm. in a regulatory um, exposure and decisions uh, so that you know, in the future if they can be of course you know like uh, potentially leaders of a country leaders of an organization or even leaders of their own metaverse or multiverse whatever we choose to call it you know like it, it's the world is virtual now and you know there are a lot more room for creativity there's a lot more room for freedom of speech there are a lot more rooms for different worlds to coexist in each other even within their own country so i think when we come back to the real world our universe and we talk about like legislative support i think governments uh, uh, could uh, take more into consideration about technology and the existence mm -hmm. of virtual worlds so that they can empower uh, young people and even uh, less privileged people so that they can exercise their own inner good and uh, we could uh, help them develop leadership skills so that they can um, use it for the greater good uh, in different forms of universes. Thank you, Bernard. So, uh, Musa, Please raise the last question, and then the, we can jump on to the last part about the future curriculum. Now the time is 7.18. Thank you, Musa. You want to say anything? Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shari, I think Musa's mic. mic. Has got, uh, got uh, internet uh, got issues. issues so, um, uh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, Peter, you want to ask the last question, maybe? You did a good job. You can facilitate for the last part. So, what will be the future education we expect? And you can ask uh, some of the uh, participants. They haven't uh, voiced any opinion. Say, for example, a UNOSSC winner, Sita. Sita joining us? And also, um, Sati, awful. Right, right. Yep, they are our UN OSSC winner for this year. So Peter will be your floor. The last ten minutes, you can replace me. You did a good job. Thanks, Dr. Thanks, Dr. Shari. Shari. And, I, and see I see Musa is back. Musa, is your mic? Uh, is your internet sorted or? All right. Okay. Okay, we still got issue. So I think Dr. Shal is just asking for the members in the room. I see Johnny, I see Olvasaldo, I see Kudzaishe. So she's just asking in terms of the policy, just to sum up this conversation that we are speaking on policy. What's your opinion in terms of policies that should be setting up in place to support the future of artists uh, when you relate that to the education? Let me jump to Seti. Seti, do you have something in terms of policies? So as we wait for Seti to jump on, Johnny, are you with us? Uh, 
Johnny can tell us what he thinks in terms of policy. And we can just say two to three, two minutes, we get this one out of the way, and then we find we jump onto the last uh, engagement. All right, let me go to, to Zina. Zina, when you look at uh, the, the policies in terms of supporting artists, what policies would you recommend for the maybe uh, institutions or the government working with artists? Um, this is a tricky question. It would depend on the context, but I would say a policy that allows artists to um, deliver and execute their work without having to worry about copyright infringement. I think that's a crucial part. Um, being a creative individual always means um, putting your work out there. Yeah. And it's just assuring that every artist's work is being protected in terms of, um, as I've said, copyright and then IP as well. And then how will this work be utilized? Um, assuring basically all the participants um, they have the right to their own work, if that makes sense. So protecting distribution as well, protecting um, uh, plagiarism um, and all of these things. I think that's one of the crucial policies that needs to be implemented when it comes to art, uh, education and, and technology. I will say thank you so much for uh, um, Zina for bringing that up. That is really key, the protecting the artist's work. That is solid and it's the world over. And I will also just clap for you on that one. So thank you uh, for jumping on and sharing that. So let's Johnny jump on with the last one before we jump to the last uh, uh, topic for the day. So Johnny, when you look at the future of education, the policies, what do you recommend in less than a minute what policy would you recommend to the organizations or to the government working with the artists? Uh, what thank policy would you recommend? Oh, thank you for giving the opportunity for me to actually to give uh, some um, opinion here. I think um, the more importance for the government policy is actually pushing um, um, a kind of uh, uh, research um, thinking uh, for the youngster. I think that's um, so. That is very important uh, in terms of the futures. You know, the knowledge accumulation and the knowledge uh, discovery. I um, um, I was actually doing the um, research uh, in my background. So I think this is the the thing to actually to stimulate uh, the uh, youngster to understand more uh, on and appreciate uh, the. The textbook they actually they reading because most of the textbook content they just try to speak fun for the uh, student instead of they can understand or they can actually do some practical work in terms of uh, research field in a different area for example physics or uh, chemistry or biology I think the more important thing is how they can actually get the knowledge uh, from. Uh, from what they actually doing, uh, not just um, to get the knowledge from the textbook. Okay, I think I think John is coming up with some uh, solid point in terms of <laughs> knowledge coming from the textbooks and the knowledge coming from exactly what you are doing. And I think, based on what the three uh, participants in the room have shared, they are like some very solid points. Um, if you can, uh, if you've just been following um, on all on all this conversation, so. I know we still got some few minutes. So let me bring somebody on this conversation in terms of policies. I love policies as well. And it is through policies that we can get a lot actually achieved. And as and when Dr. Shirley started, she, she spoke about the new normal of productivity. So when we have the right policies in place, then obviously the artist will prosper. And all these people who do, uh, um, uh, Professor also mentioned something on sustainability and looking at the sustainable development goals. We can only achieve all this through the right policies. So I know I got Professor in the house. Professor, I'd love to hear your opinion again on this one. I'm just coming back to you uh, in terms of policies. I know you got something on this. So talk to us in terms of a policy that you will recommend for organizations and government institutions working with the artists and how to better their, their work moving into the future. So I know maybe Professor is maybe not close to his mic. I'd love to bring um, 
Caesar, Caesar, are you in the house? All right, okay, yeah. You may want to jump on and also just share your opinion in terms of policies in relation to the artist's work and the future of education. So share with us. So, so I'm not really, I mean, I'm not really involved with policy, uh, how this, these are affecting artists. I would agree with Tina, I think, was mentioned regarding uh, copyright. Uh, just because you can see with social media, what we were talking about before, now everything is virtual, everything is on the cloud, and it is very difficult to track uh, where, what belongs to who and who started something. Uh, we can see it with dancers, uh, uh, with uh, yeah, dancers that they do their choreographies online and suddenly uh, someone that is uh, trending uh, okay. repeated and this person becomes really famous. Um, the way to follow up that is actually quite important, I believe, yeah. All right, okay. So then the final one, Dr. Charlie, I'm coming on to you now. I saw your hand up. If you are asked to give one policy to government institutions, or like to other NGOs working with uh, artists. What policies? I know you draw a lot of things, and I do. I do follow your work, Dr. Shirley. What policy would you recommend? So thank you, Peter. I think the policy has to be more like practical, and also if for proposal for funding has to be very like um, short time to get the result. Because in the past, uh, it took a quite a long time to get a government funding, say for example, six months or even maybe one year. But under COVID-19, because everything has been changed so fast, if we really want to support the community for artists, technology, educator or teenager, has to be short and fast and flexible so that they can get some like starting money, the seed money to turn their dreams to be reality to learn why they need to learn that kind of knowledge so that they can survive and also they can sustain. Otherwise, if they're too rigid for the policy, it will reduce about their time and also their energy to try. It just discourage them rather than encourage them. And then uh, Peter, let me maybe round up because we have only about three minutes. So thank you once again, uh, Peter, you did an excellent job, and also Musa. And then uh, we have a lot of guests today from about at least six countries. We have Professor Margarita from um, Univoc, uh, and, and also we have Cesar and Sina from Discuss APAC, which is Spanish. We have Anna, the artist from Russia, and also we have UNOSS winner from uh, Kenya, Nairobi, and also uh, some of the islands. So as a result, our three ecosystems. The first ecosystem is about art. So for the art community, we need to ask two questions. What is life? What is life? And also the second thing will be, how are we going to preserve our, our values, our human values? So that will be about content creation. For the second community will be technology. We asked about two questions, the same thing. Number one, we need to know who we are. Second thing, how, how to use technology to deliver the values, to make the community the humanistic community. For educator, we need to ask about three questions, one more. One is, how do we design our curriculum to engage the teenagers to understand the world, to understand about technology? And also, we need to ask about why. As a lot of speakers mentioned today, it's about ethics, about IT, about originality. As Peter just summed up about four elements, flexible, international, soft skills, technology. So we need to teach our teenager why we need to learn about the four things. So I think at the end of the conclusion today is art is a way of life and also is a content providers. Technology will be the tools to help us to deliver the content and values. And then at the end, educator is to integrate all those to help our teenagers 
to think why we need to think something like that. Otherwise, we cannot sustain without our teenagers. So I hope uh, you enjoy about today's community, and then we can take the group photo and thank once again for BMI Intelligent Johnny and also Joshua for all the support. So let's turn on the video. So anything uh, you want to ask? Anybody want to give any comment? So I will write, I will write up the report and then send to all of you uh, to add any comment of today's event. Okay. So thank you, Joshua, and also uh, Josiah. You can come over. Yeah. Okay. So welcome everybody, and then have a happy New Year coming this weekend. Thank you so much, Professor Margarita Shirley, Dr. Shirley Law from Xi'an University, and also Peter once again from Nairobi, and Caesar. Thank you so much, and we have UN OSSC winner. Um, you can turn on the video if the Wi-Fi can be connected. So see you all in 2022. Bye. 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 Bye.